Right. So today we're going to be trying to do as much stuff for your body that you can to kind of counter act a lot of sitting, a lot of computer work. Um, I know that I've been doing a lot more of it lately um, because of the state of our world. And I am very sympathetic to all of you out there that might be doing a lot more sitting and computer work as well. So um, there's, we're going to need some props for this. So um, make sure that you've gathered them. I've set up some already. So basically what you're going to need is uh, the equivalent of like four blankets or four towels. So in this case, I have two yoga blankets here that I have folded over. Um, because in case you, if you have yoga blankets, if you have four yoga blankets, which might not be the case, um, but if you do have four, then go ahead and lay them flat and then you'll roll them. But if you only have towels, then I would use two towel or four towels, um, that we're also going to roll, right? So we're just, we lay them nice and flat so that then we can roll them and have it nice and even. We don't want any creases. Okay, and then the problem with doing something like towels or this folded over yoga blanket is it's not going to be quite long enough, right? This isn't um, quite long enough, so you're going to need to get something else that's like the equivalent of your block, okay? So the other thing is you need at least one block or the equivalent of a block, and we really want it to be about three inches high, right? This is the standard yoga block size. Um, and so if you're doing this shorter bolster, lay out here right i'm going to be calling this rolled up blankets your bolster um then maybe you add a block to the end right or if you don't have a block then like two thick books stacked on top of each other or something like that the equivalent of a, approximately three inches okay um an alternative would be if you have a full length foam roller right that could serve as well that's about the same length there okay um there is an option for a strap, which could be a belt or a yoga strap if you have it, but I'm not going to be explicitly cueing that you need a strap. It's just for those of you who kind of like the strap at key times, I'll say, if you have a strap, you can grab it, grab it for this, okay? Um, so we're actually going to start in a different position, though. Okay, we're going to start on your back. You're going to have your block ready off to your side. Okay, or your equivalent block, maybe your stacked books. Okay, and then what we're going to do is lay your knees over this bolster that you've created or your foam roller. Okay, and you're basically just going to lay on down. All right, finding a comfortable um, position here on your back. Okay, to kind of settle in. Right, you might notice that I'm kind of lengthening my legs out, getting my um, legs to kind of come away from my hips, right, and get my tailbone pressing toward my um, feet so that this, like, extra curve in the low back is just a little bit lengthened, right? You might bring your arms out to the sides, palms facing up, or you might rest your hands on your torso, perhaps one hand on your heart, one hand on your chest. If you haven't already, just sort of shimmy the shoulders down and away from the ears so that you can invite in um, a little more ease, a little more relaxation into this shape on your back, right? Making any adjustments that you like here, okay? Anything that might make you feel more comfortable. And um, if you're peeking at me, I'm sitting up, but that doesn't mean that you should, right? You're staying on your back, you're settling in here. I'm just seated so that I can kind of get myself ready for you. But you're just, allowing the eyes to close, right? Maybe inviting in a deeper, slower breath in and out through your nose, All right? If it would feel good to open the mouth on your exhales, go ahead and do that, right? Maybe you let out a couple sighs through the mouth. Ha. Right, you can make this ha sound to release some tension, some um, feeling, some emotion, whatever is going on for you, kind of letting it go, maybe through that open mouth exhale, the ha sighing out. Okay. 
You can also do that silently if you prefer. All right, so just starting to invite in this slower, deeper breath in and out through your nose now, sealing the lips if you haven't already. All right, and in slowing the breath in and out through your nose, notice the tendency um, to uh, maybe maybe there's some choppiness, maybe there's some shortness still going on, but try to lengthen that breath and let the exhales be longer. Breath comes in, breath comes out through your nose, slow and full. I don't normally um, read to you in my classes, but uh, I keep thinking about this um, excerpt from Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic. I read it a few years ago, and I just keep thinking about it in these times, and so I just decided that I wanted to read it to you. Um, this is a book about creativity and how to cultivate cultivate your creativity, even uh, if you have fear. And uh, while creativity might sound like something that um, isn't so important or might sound frivolous in a moment like this, maybe where you're filled with lots of fear, um, I kind of think that creativity has been the only thing that has really brought me joy since um, all of the shelter in place virus stuff started happening. So I thought maybe if I could bring some of that joy to you in some small way um, through this invitation, I would. Um, but basically in this part of the book, it's on page 25 if you happen to be reading the book, um, she's writing a letter to fear. So she says, dearest fear, Creativity and I are going to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you have to take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything interesting. And may I say, you are superb at your job. So by all means, keep doing your job if you feel you must. But I will also be doing my job on this road trip, which is to work hard and stay focused. And creativity will be doing its job, which is to remain stimulating and inspiring. There's plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us, so make yourself at home. But understand this, creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. I recognize and respect that you are a part of this family. And so I will never exclude you from our activities. But still, your suggestions will never be followed. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You're not allowed to touch the roadmaps. You're not allowed to suggest detours. You're not allowed to fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. But above all else, my dear old familiar friend, you are absolutely forbidden to drive. Then we head off together, me and creativity and fear, side by side by side forever, advancing once more into the terrifying but marvelous terrain of unknown outcomes. Come back to your breath. Notice how your breath is in your body. Notice where you most feel your breath in your body.
If you have your own intention or dedication you would like to set for your practice for the next uh, little less than an hour, you can take this moment to honor or acknowledge that. And slowly, gently, you're going to just start to invite small movements back into your body, right? You're staying on your back. You're just inviting those small movements, whatever that might mean for you, into your body. Right? So maybe you're circling wrists or ankles, pointing and flexing the toes, swaying your head side to side, just letting any organic movement, any movement that feels intuitively right to you arrive into your body to wake back up, all right, whatever serves you best. All right, you're gonna take your time, and then as you're ready, you're gonna um, bend your knee so that you can plant your feet on the outside of your bolster, right, the base of your bolster, and you're gonna just start to roll that bolster up toward you, right? You're hopefully not unrolling your blanket that you've created, right? You're trying to just slide it, so that then when you press down into your feet, hip width apart, you can lift your hips and slide that bolster under your sacrum. Right, your sacrum is a flat bone above your tailbone but below your spine. And there's always an option here to be on a block instead of on your on your roller. Right, we will need the roller for later, but for this part, if you want to be on the lowest height of your block, go ahead and do that. Right, so even if you can go to a higher height, I recommend the lowest height right, just the three inch height of your um, block for this first part, okay, because we're going to go slow, right, we're moving any props that might be out in your way out of the way so that you can roll the shoulders down and under your body and get your arms to the sides, palms facing up preferably, right, if it feels better for whatever reason to have your palms down, you can, but palms up allows the shoulder blades to start to pull toward each other underneath your body. All right, if this is feeling really lovely and you wanna just stay here, go ahead. But I want you to play with seeing what it would feel like to walk the feet away, right? To start to stretch out your hip flexors. The hip flexors get super tight, right? We spend a long time sitting um, with a big crease in the hip, right? And so these hip flexors get really compressed and it's nice to stretch them out by doing this kind of reverse shape. And the reason to start at the low height of the block is because we don't want to just go to 100, right? We don't want to go to the full stretch the first time you're doing it. And we're also not going to be here for as long as um, we will later, right? We're going to come back to this with more intensity and hold for longer. But in this first shape, you're just kind of breathing a few breaths, not too long. And if it's too intense, if you feel any pinching in the spine or it's just too intense for whatever reason, you can bring your heels to rest on another block, right, underneath, right? That can feel nice if it's too intense to kind of just rest the heels lifted on something higher. I'm showing you in, in my screen if you wanted to do that, make that adjustment, go ahead, right? The goal is to just kind of let the um, feet stay at least hip distance, maybe even closer together. Right, you're softening, breathing into and around your props, trying to relax and keep the shoulder blades rolling down and toward each other underneath you. All right, I'm gonna just breathing maybe one more long breath here. Beautiful, and then from here, you're gonna bend both knees, walk the feet back under the knees. All right, you're gonna inhale, lift the left foot up toward the sky. Okay, so, if you have a strap, now would be a good time to bring it around the ball of your left foot. If you don't have one and you want to just interlace your hands behind your left thigh, that's perfect as well, right? You can also just um, not use your arms at all, right? And let the left heel do the work by pressing up toward the sky. That doesn't mean that the knee has to be straight. It could be bent. What matters more to me is that you're pressing that left heel up toward the sky, flexing your toes toward your nose. Again, we won't be here for long. We're just inviting this beginning stretch into the back of the leg, relaxing the shoulders down and away from the ears underneath your body. 
Next exhale from here, you're gonna plant left foot on the floor under the knee and reach right foot up toward the sky. So same thing, second side. All right, notice any holding that you might be doing anywhere. See if you can soften in your face, in the space between your eyebrows, in the shoulders, right? We tend to hold in these places. So just doing a little scan of your body. Where are you holding? Can you come back to your slow full breath? Can you use your exhale to soften, to relax? One more long breath here. Next exhale, as you're ready from here, we're gonna plant the right foot back on the floor. We're gonna lift the hips just enough to slide that bolster or block out from under your sacrum and roll nice and slow one vertebra at a time all the way back down to your mat. Right, so that the tailbone points toward the heels and the low back is nice and flat into the floor underneath you. Okay, we're gonna pause here for a moment, heel toe the feet wide as your mat, windshield wiper the knees right and left. Allow the knees the full opportunity to touch down toward the floor. You don't have to force them to touch, but you're really letting them fall as far as they will go before you move on to the other side, right? You're allowing those knees their full range so that you can get into the hips, so that you can feel the low back lift and get a nice stretch in the low back in this way. Really nice. From here, we're gonna inhale to find a neutral spine through center, heel toe the feet back under the knees so that they're hip distance. Cross the right ankle over the left knee, keep the right toes flexed toward the right knee, and just start to do those same sways side to side. And it could feel better to do small swaying here, if it feels okay to do big swaying, do big swaying, right? Maybe you sway so much that the knee and then the foot come to the floor on either side of you. Maybe not. Again, even though I said do big swaying if you can, that doesn't mean that you do something that causes pain, right? A little discomfort is okay. Pain is not, All right? The next time you inhale, you're going to find stillness through center and start to lift this left leg up so that you can thread the needle, bringing the right hand between, between the window of the legs, interlace behind the left thigh. Keep the right toes flexed, right? Those top toes flexed toward your knee. Use your right forearm where it already is to roll the right thigh open and away as you draw your left leg in closer, right? We want this to be fairly intense. Okay, you don't have to go so intense again that you feel pain, no pain, right? Just intensity, just discomfort. You're still softening as equally as you're engaged, right? So for as much intensity as you might feel in this shape, there's also an equal part softening in your face, in your shoulders, coming back to your slow, full breath. There could be a rocking here side to side. You could be in stillness, you choose. And we're here for another three long breaths or five mm, faster breaths, depending on where your breath is at right now. Next exhale from here, we'll plant left foot back on the floor or right foot back on the floor, left ankle crosses over your right knee. Flex your left toes toward your left knee and start to do those swaying motions side to side. Again, you might start small if that's feeling better in your body. You listen to your body, you know it much better than I do, right? And then as you sway side to side here, see if you can do big swing if that feels okay. Right, maybe your foot and then your knee come to the floor on either side, maybe not. Right, whatever you're doing, let it be enjoyable. It can be a little uncomfortable if that if it's a little uncomfortable, that's okay, right? But just don't let any pain be having be coming in, right? And you're relaxing your face, inhaling to come back through center and then lifting, right? To thread the needle. Left hand be um, we'll come between the window of the legs. 
Use your left forearm or elbow to press the left thigh away. Left toes stay flexed toward the left knee. All right, again, you could be rocking here. There's intensity, but there's also a softening to meet that intensity. Use your breath to relax certain areas of the body where you find that you're holding. Three more long breaths or five shorter breaths, depending on where your breath is at. Mm, beautiful. And then from here on your next exhale, as you're ready, your right foot will come back to the floor. Left foot will come back to the floor. We're going to send everything long. All right. So straight legs and then arms up and overhead. All right. So we're getting a nice long body here. Arms and legs going opposite directions. OK, you're going to stretch out as far as you can with your feet flexed. Right. So your toes are coming toward your nose and you're actually pushing the heels down and away from your body. You're reaching the fingertips up toward the back wall behind you. Okay, notice what even hips feels like here. Keep those even hips as you start to walk the legs, right? The feet over toward the left, right? The hips don't move, just the feet move over toward the left. And then once they've gone all the way over, you're gonna do the same thing with your arms, maybe your torso, shoulders a little bit as well. Just keep the hips grounded especially that right hip will want to lift away see if you can keep that right hip down and grounded breathe slow full breaths into your right side body maybe you imagine that you're breathing more space in between each of your right side ribs two more long breaths here Really nice. From here on your next inhale, you're going to walk everything back through center. Wait for the exhale before you walk feet over to the right first. Notice even hips here. Keep the hips even. And then once the feet have walked over to the right as much as feels like they're going to, you're going to walk the arms as well. Maybe even the shoulders kind of shimmy over to the right. Again, that left hip will want to lift. So see if you can keep it down and grounded. And breathe more space in between each of those left side ribs. Two more long breaths here. Really nice. From here on your next inhale, you're going to come back to your center. You choose. Maybe you hug the knees in to reset, rocking, circling. Maybe you roll off to one side to come to a seat. Maybe you rock forward to come to a seat. Either way, we're going to make your way to a seat so that you can grab that bolster that we made, right? Or maybe your foam roller or whatever else you have. Okay, if you're using a bolster and a block setup, I would recommend bringing the block so that you can kind of sit on it, right? So that it's down by the base rather than the head. That way, when you lay down with the length of the spine over it, your sacrum is the thing resting on the block rather than your head. Okay, so from here, we're just finding um, this kind of long spine on your centered on your mat, on your roller. Okay, and then from here, we're just going to bring the arms to a T shape. All right, and we're going to bend the elbows, right? So you're coming not exactly to cactus arms, okay? So I'm going to just show you on the wall so you can see a little better, but you stay on your foam roller. You're bending the elbows so that they hug kind of down toward the hips. They're not coming maybe totally to the hips. They're just bending a little past the height of the shoulders, right? The elbows are lower than the shoulders. Okay, and then from here, you're just extending the arms out on the floor, right? You want to see if you can keep your hands touching the floor. 
as you bend and straighten. Right, bend and straighten with palms facing up toward the sky. All right, so if you imagine that you're looking at me from a bird's eye view of the wall behind me is the floor, you're just bending and straightening with the palms facing up toward the sky, backs of the hands touching the floor. Right, if this is feeling super good, keep doing this. If you want to try other things, you can start to extend up overhead, starting to make like these kind of bending and straightening motions up and overhead, right? You can also keep arms relatively straight and just slide up and down, right? Again, you want to try to keep the backs of the hands mostly toward the floor or even touching the floor as you do these kind of snow angel or like goal post and extension movements. Right, maybe the W's and then out to T. Right, you're just kind of playing with these movements and also feeling free to like circle your wrists as re as well. Right, like if you're extended and then you want to circle palms down or up in each um, orientation of your arm as it comes down, you can definitely do that too. And you're just kind of playing through these little movements of the arms, right? Trying to whoo, open up in the shoulders, right? In these ways. And this is kind of just, um, this is opening, right? This is broadening through your chest. This is doing a little of the anti-work, right? Of all of that hunching over toward your computer, right? Or if you're reading the hunching over as you read, right? All of that work that we do sitting where we tend to hunch, right, that just gets things a little tight, and um, we're just kind of greasing them up, right, your little joints and your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, by doing these little, like, movements up and down, as well as the turning of the palm toward the floor and then back up, right, if, if uh, you find something that feels like it's extra creaky, that might be a little indication to you to do a little more of it, Right, maybe you spend a little more time doing uh, that motion in that specific area. Right, so play with it. See what any of those suggestions that I just gave. What what feels like it's doing the most. You're also welcome to just do what feels like most delicious. Right, if just kind of some simple movement of up and down snow angels feels the best. You don't have to be always working. Right, you can be doing the thing that feels just good. Right, that's doing something for you as well to just be enjoying it all right and then from here when you when you're ready you're gonna kind of pause back at this shoulder height of the arms right so you might check right and left see if you've got your hands at about level of your shoulders okay and then you're just gonna roll to one side I'm rolling to my right side so maybe you stay with me you roll to your right side in order for you almost like you're gonna roll off of your roller right or your bolster and once you're kind of leaning to the right, you're going to lift your left wrist. Right? You're pointing your toes toward the floor. The wrist is lifted, but that doesn't mean the whole shoulder lifts, right? The, the hand kind of stays reaching toward the floor. Right? You're just getting this stretch through this whole front side of the arm here. We tend to do a lot of grasping and rounding in things. So this is just an opening up the other way. Okay, and then we're going to roll over to the other side. Same thing here. We're going to lean to the left the left arm can now relax right and then you're just lifting the right wrist up so that the palm can kind of point toward the right side wall fingers toward the floor my fingers aren't actually even touching the floor it's just the wrist that's lifting my shoulders just kind of hanging out trying to relax the shoulder away from the ear over the bolster toward the floor right just the wrist that's lifting to open up in this way Great, so if that felt really good, maybe you do one more each side. Maybe you go back to some of that W uh, motion or angels, snow angels motions, right? Whatever is feeling good to you. Okay, so you can always come back to this. If you're feeling like you just want to do more of this, you could pause the video, keep going, do more of it, right? But I'm going to move on. Okay, so you're going to roll off your bolster when you're ready. 
Okay, come to a seat and move that bolster and block out of the way. Okay, so we're just coming to a clean mat. Off to the side, go your props. Okay, and then in this shape with a clean mat, you're in you're gonna come to your tabletop. Right? So um from your tabletop here, we're just gonna come into a couple cat cows, right? You're you're kind of getting in touch with your wrists here in this way now. Okay, so we're inhaling to lift the gaze, the tailbone, the um, toes are untucked, right, so that you can lengthen through the tailbone here, and then exhale to hug the belly in, round through your spine, roll and open, broaden through the back body. All right, and inhale to lift and lengthen once again, and an exhale to round in. All right, from here, you're going to tuck the toes under, and you're going to come to sit back on the heels, right? And if this toe squat is too intense for you, I know for a lot of people, tucking the toes and sitting on the heels is, like, way too intense. So what you can do is keep the toes tucked and just come up onto the knees. And if your knees start to bother you, then go ahead and grab, like, a blanket. Maybe you un unwind to your blanket that you had rolled right, or your towel, right, we're not going to need that roll thing anymore, so you could unwind it and use that for padding, but if you can sit on your heels, then go ahead and do that, right, you can stay on your mat that way, I'm just turning toward you so that you can see my next things that I'm going to be doing, okay, so from here, we're going to inhale to reach the arms out, widen up, right, we've got hopefully a little more mobility in the shoulders to do that after all that work, and exhale, bring your hands through your heart center. Right from here, hands to the heart. You're going to see if you can pull your wrist down so that they're in line with your elbows. Right, we're getting a little stretch through the forearm in a different way now. Okay, there's a lot of tension that gets created here. Like, there's a lot of um, like carpal tunnel and stuff like that can happen from sitting at computers for a long time. So, we're just pressing in this way to stretch the wrist in this way. And then we're going to turn the palms down or turn the fingers down, see how that feels, to try to keep the wrists in line with the elbows, um, fingers down. Okay, again, if you need to come up, you can, but try to keep the toes tucked at least so that you still get that toe stretch, right, that inner arch stretch. Okay, we're like doing two things at once. All right, so then from here, you could come back, right, see what feels best for you. You could also do reverse prayer, All right? Reverse prayer would be, Fingers coming together and then um, bringing those wrists in line with the elbows behind your body. If that's too intense, don't do it, right? Just do what you can do. Right? Don't bring yourself any pain. Pain means that you might be injuring yourself, right? We just want discomfort. Discomfort's okay, not pain. Okay, and then we're going to do some finger stretches. These are a little weird. I learned them from um from a PT okay so we're just gonna get your wrist like nice and limp reaching in front of you right you may shake it to make sure that your wrist is limp and then you're gonna just reach you're gonna grab one finger right you're gonna pull it like you're like you're extending away right and then toward you okay so it's pulling down toward the floor and then toward you and the wrist stays limp okay and then we're gonna do the same thing with each finger down toward the floor and then toward you and you'll feel this stretch you can feel it when you pull down and then toward you you can feel that there's all this connection that goes all the way up right you'll you'll realize that everything's connected right this pulling down toward the floor and then toward your body right? and then maybe do the other side all right so make sure your wrist is nice and limp no holding on right and then finger pulls down and then toward you Right, you're pulling, like you're going to pull the finger out of its socket. That's kind of what you're doing, but not with that much force, right? And then toward you. Down and toward. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the palm up. Right, so again, you're trying to have like mostly a, a limp wrist. You're pulling down and then toward you. And you don't have to force it, right? Just a little bit of pulling. You can really feel it. That's what we're going for is just the stretch. You don't have to force anything. <clears throat> right? 
down toward the floor and then toward you. All right. Okay, and then the last one, if you're really hurting, you can come up here, right? Maybe you even untuck the toes, that's okay. If you need to tap out, you can, right? You can just stay kneeling, right? And if you're still in your toe squat, good for you, okay? We're gonna make a fist, we're gonna take the opposite hand and we're gonna cuff your wrist, right? Like a, like a sleeve, and we're gonna pull down a little bit, right? This hand is pulling down, and then we're just gonna do circles, okay? And maybe switch the direction of the circles. And you can kind of play with where on your wrist you're cuffing it. See what feels uh, best for you, right? I kind of like it right, like right below my wrist crease is actually where I'm actually, I find that I feel the most intensity. So that's where I do it. But you can play around with where it feels the best to you. Okay. All right, really nice. And then from here, we're going to, I'm gonna move my blanket out of the way. You're gonna tap out if you need to, right? You can tap your feet out if your toes are screaming at you. It's not called screaming toe pose for nothing, right? But then from here, we're gonna to come to sit on our butts with your feet in front of you. And you're gonna see if you can get your fingers toward you and your elbows um, maybe about shoulder width, right? You want your hands about shoulder width, your elbows about shoulder width. And we're gonna puff up the chest nice and big, right? Getting the chest nice and puffed. Okay, you're going to try to peel your shoulder blades on your back toward each other. Right, peel your shoulder blades together so that they're touching. If this is enough intensity for you here, just focusing on puffing the chest and peeling the shoulder blades toward each other, then don't do anything else, right? Just stay here. If you want more intensity, you can bend the elbows. Right, see how that increases the intensity. And if you're bending the elbows, Make sure that you're keeping them hugging in toward each other. Maybe you even grab like a paper towel roll and squeeze it between your elbows. Okay. All right. And then from here, we're going to reverse. So we're bringing the fingers away now, shoulder width, right? Shoulder width with the hands. Puff the chest, pull the shoulder blades together, right? Puff the chest, keep the shoulder blades pulling. And then again, maybe you bend the elbows, right? Puff the chest, shoulder blades together, bend elbows. Okay, so maybe you keep working on these. If you wanted to up the intensity a little bit, you can start to press into the feet and lift the hips for your reverse table. The tendency here is to dip the hips too much. So see if you can keep the hips lifted like you're, like you're flat through the upper body here or through the from the knees to the shoulders right nice and flat like you're resting a plate on your pelvis or your belly right and you're puffing up your chest and still pulling your shoulder blades together right you can play around with sitting back down and then maybe you bring the fingers toward you same thing here right you want to lift the hips so that you're in one line puff the chest and pull the shoulder blades together Right, another thing to think about is your fingers staying flat. They tend to curl here. Okay, and then you release back down. Right, we're gonna come back to your tabletop. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips here. And you might take a moment to just kind of tilt front and back, right? Notice how that this kind of invites in more or less of a stretch to your wrist as well. You're kind of getting this muscle memory of what it feels like to distribute weight more into the hands or the knees, okay? Because what I want you to do now is try to distribute weight evenly over the hands and the knees, okay? And then from here, we're going to do these like shoulder shrugs. Right, so I'm going to show you um, like an active, an active shoulders and lazy shoulders. Right, so lazy, active, lazy, active. Right, we want to just practice lazy and active shoulders. Okay, these are like shoulder shrugs. They're really 
they're really good for shoulder mobility. You could just do some of these um, to like warm up anytime you're doing shoulder work, okay? Um, because now what I want you to do is keep active shoulders, right? So no crunching and no laziness. Keep those active shoulders, the broadening of the shoulder blades away from each other to now do these cat cows once again. And then inhale to lift through the tailbone, the gaze, the belly drops heavy toward the floor. Exhale, hug your belly in, rounding through the back, tucking chin and tailbone, right? So never do we come into a lazy shoulders, whether we're in cat or cow, right? We don't want to be disengaged when we do cat or cow, right? We want to be nice and engaged in the shoulders, whether you're in cat or cow, okay? All right, really nice. From here on your next inhale, you're going to find a neutral spine through center. Hands will come one hand length forward from where they are right now. Tuck your toes, rise up to your plank pose. All right, this is just to kind of gauge, are my hands the right distance from my feet before you press back to your downward facing dog? Maybe you bend one knee at a time to cuddle out here in your first downward dog. All right, and we're going to go through um, a couple, like, sun salutation, Surya Namaskar, okay? But I don't usually do this. This is just to build heat so that we can get back into that kind of anti-sitting stuff that I was talking about before, right? So um, it's really just for that. Okay, so we're going to try to keep good form, though. So on the next inhale, you're going to come forward into your plank pose. Get nice and strong through the shoulders, right? Not coming down and dipping, but nice and strong through the shoulders. You might be down onto your knees. And you're going to exhale to bend the elbows. Hug your elbows in so that it's a tricep push-up, right? So you want to be coming down with the elbows, grazing the ribs to the sides, right? The belly and the chest land at the same time. Press the tops of the feet into the floor so that the kneecaps lift, and inhale to lift for your cobra, right? Your shoulders roll back, and your uh, heads of the shoulders roll up, right? So this, this dip here in the shoulders that we see a lot, we want this to pull back in your cobra, okay? On the exhale, we lower, and we still keep the shoulder blades back on the back body, Maybe on the inhale, you press back up to your plank or modified plank, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Right? Inhale, lift right foot up toward the sky. Exhale, bring it forward in between your hands. Pull the feet together like you're scissoring them together. Inhale, rise for your high lunge. Right? Nice, strong through the legs. Scissor the feet. Exhale, fold forward, hands plant, blocks are the floor, left foot steps forward, forward fold, bend the knees so that the belly touches the thighs. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to your shins, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, inhale, rise up, flat back, arms come up and overhead. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, plant hands. Step right foot back. High lunge. Good. Exhale, hands plant. Step left foot back. Plank. Lower. You can skip it if you're getting too overwhelmed, right? You don't have to do these vinyasas. But we are trying to build heat, so just meet yourself where you are. See if you can come to that heated place. Inhale, lift the left leg up toward the sky from your downward facing dog. Exhale, left foot steps through. Inhale, reach arms, high lunge, scissor the legs. Exhale, hands plant, step right foot forward, forward fold, bend the knees, belly touches thighs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Bend the knees, inhale, rise up, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, plant hands, step left foot back, lunge. Exhale, fold. Plant hands, step right foot back, 
option to come through your vinyasa, option to skip us, skip it, meet us in your downward dog or child's pose. Once you arrive in your downward facing dog, right, we're all going to meet downward facing dog. You're going to reach your right hand toward your left foot, grab your left ankle. Maybe you grab outside, maybe you grab inside. Inhale, come forward, right hand back to meet the left plank. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog, left hand grabs right ankle. Inhale, press back, forward, plank. All right, we're going to just flow through these. Maybe you move a little faster than that. Maybe you move a little slower. Just make sure you move with integrity, right? Your shoulders stay engaged. The elbow creases stay pointing toward the front of the room, All right? Sometimes we roll in, try to keep the elbow creases pointing up, okay? You're coming through plank each time, hugging belly in, keeping shoulders engaged. Really nice. Wherever you are on your next inhale, we're going to bend the knees, walk the feet up toward the hands, halfway lift, hands to shins, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, inhale, rise up, flat back. Arms come all the way up. Exhale, hands pull through your heart. Right, maybe your hands stay at your heart. Maybe they come out to the sides. Right, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. See if you can come back to your breath. Hopefully we've built a little heat. Right, we'll use that heat. That heat's good for you. It allows you to go deeper with, um, without hurting yourself, right? You need warmth to get into some of those deeper poses. So notice where your breath is. Really nice. And when you're ready, you might inhale. Blink the eyes open softly. Step to a wall. All right, we want hopefully a part of the wall where you can kind of access flat, a flat area. Okay, and you want to try to get your butt touching the wall and the backs of the shoulders touching the wall and the back of the head touching the wall. All right, so not so important whether your heels quite touch. They don't have to touch, right? Just the back of the head, the back of the shoulders, and the back of the butt, right? The, and then see if you can get your arms from there to touch, right? So from here, we're going to just do a little bit more of those, those angels, but at the wall now. We're trying to slide along the wall, staying in contact with the wall the whole time. Maybe you move a picture out of the way if there's pictures on the wall, right? And then... From um, from that space, right, you might stay with those snow angels just coming up and down, okay, or you might um, invite in those W's again, right, so the shoulders stay at the wall, the back of the head stays at the wall, if you've got a hair tie in the way, move that out of the way, right, you want the back of the head on the wall, and we're just opening, seeing if you can really stretch out through straight arms and then coming back, right, ooh, that might be really hard. That's okay, all right? So you can try those Ws, the bend of the elbows, and then trying to straighten the arms out to that T shape. Okay, you can try um, kind of bending the elbows and then instead coming up. Overhead. Okay, you can try those snow angels. Okay, you just play. We're only here for a few more breaths. All right, we're really opening up those shoulders, getting into those little areas, all right, doing a lot of that oppositional work for all of that sitting that you might have been doing. All right, if it feels really hard, right, or you're really struggling somewhere, that could be an indication that you want to spend more time there, right? That's like a, 
a place that needs more attention. Mm -hmm. So you might pause in certain areas, do those more. You might breathe slow, full breaths into those areas. All right, really nice. From here, we're going to step gently away from the wall. Notice any changes that you might have. Right, notice anything that feels different. Slow, full breath. Right, coming back. Where is your breath now? What do you notice happening in your body now? Really nice. If your eyes are closed, you could keep them closed or you could softly blink them open. We're going to interlace the fingers and press the palms away up toward the sky. Right from here, you can stay nice and tall through your shoulders and side stretch over to the right. Hips bump to the left. Inhale back through center, side stretch over to the left. Hips bump to the right. Really nice. Inhale, releasing through the fingers. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Step a foot back. Doesn't matter which one. Basically, what we're doing is we're coming to wide legs on. Um, horizontally on your mat. So just step whatever foot makes sense so that you can get those wide legs. Okay, and then we're going to start by bending the right knee and coming into warrior two on your right side. Okay, so from here with warrior two, you want to roll the left thigh open, right? Maybe you even roll the left shoulder open. When we do this, sometimes the right knee likes to clock in, right, toward the hips. We want to see if the right knee can instead extend toward the right pinky toe, right? You're opening through both hips. Okay, from here, we're going to inhale, straighten that right knee, reach the shoulders forward, nice extension through the spine. So we're not dumping down forward, right? We're just reaching and extending out through this right side body, right? Nice and long here. Okay, and then from here, the right hand is going to come to the right shin. Okay, uh, like most likely won't come to the floor, right? We want to stay up higher and extended through the spine, right? Left hand will come up toward the sky for your triangle pose. Really nice, okay? There's always the option for the right hand to be resting on a block. If you have a block and you're doing that, I encourage you to use the block behind the leg instead, right? This will allow the shoulders to open more and lean the head back a little bit, right? So you're getting this nice extension out through the crown of the head. Really nice. From here, we're gonna bend into the right knee, bring the hand inside the foot, and send the left hand overhead, extended side angle, right? Really important to keep this whole left side of the chest open rather than dumping in in the shoulder, right? More important to stay up higher, maybe Right forearm is on your right thigh if you need more height so that you can keep this whole left shoulder open, right? This hand comes overhead with a straight arm. The goal is to get this arm to be kind of an extension of the side ribs, right? Lengthening through that left side body. Really nice. And then from here, we're going to inhale, come back up through center. We're going to turn all 10 toes toward center, right, so that you're horizontal on your mat again. And then from here, I want you to bump your feet in or your heels in, right, so that you're in a slightly shorter stance, right? Your heels came in so that your toes are pointing out 45 degrees, and you're going to descend into your goddess pose, right? So in goddess, we want to try to get the uh, hands to point up toward the sky like they're holding plates. We want to avoid the knees coming past the ankles, right? You want to keep the knees stepped over the ankles. You got to send the weight back into the heels, okay? 
And then from here, we might kind of sway side to side here. We might do those same Ws, okay? Extending out through the arms and then closing. Really nice, we're not here for long. We're not here for long. Good, okay, from here you're gonna inhale, extend up through star. Exhale, turn the um, left toes, or right toes in, bend the left knee, warrior two, second side. Okay, so again, we're opening through the thighs, opening that left, <clears throat> sorry, that right thigh, I'm mirroring you, okay? Right thigh opening, right shoulder opening, and left knee avoiding coming in towards center, right? This left thigh is also opening knee toward pinky toe, okay? So we're staying here and worry to just for a moment to get centered, lengthening through the spine so that you can straighten the front leg and extend toward the left, all right? As you extend, that doesn't mean you dump down, right? You stay nice and tall through the spine and extend out toward the left, and then the hand comes down to your shin, okay? Right hand comes up toward the sky, open through this right side of the chest again, making sure that you're not caving in here with your shoulder, right? Keep the right side of the chest open in your triangle pose. Good, and then from here, we're gonna bend the left knee, plant the left hand inside the foot or maybe forearm to thigh as you bring right hand overhead, palm toward the floor. Again, this arm is being used to traction the spine so that you can get all this length through the right side body, okay? So you're really extending your fingertips out toward the left side wall. Beautiful, really good job. Okay, from here on your inhale, you're gonna rise back up. We're gonna maybe get blocks if you have them, okay? Or those books so that you can have some support here in front of you as you bring all 10 toes back to face toward the front of the mat or the side of the mat right the, sh the long edge of the mat this time we're going to keep the feet a little wider you're going to point the toes in towards center like pigeon toed you're going to bring your hands to your hips and roll your shoulders back your elbows back okay we're going to start to hinge at the hips here really nice okay and then once you kind of arrived in a halfway lift shape right you're kind of hinged halfway your hands are going to come down to those blocks so that your palms are flat okay if you are in fingertips on the floor instead that's fine right but if you have blocks i recommend getting flat palms instead okay from here you're welcome to bend into one knee at a time to make your way more gently into each inner thigh all right, but eventually I want you to find stillness through center, whatever that means for you, right? That might be arms extended forward like downward facing dog. That might be hands pulling through the window of the legs. It might be that you feel that you want to grab opposite ankles. Maybe if you have space to do so, you're interlacing your hands behind your back so that the palms are touching. Right? You don't want the palms to be separated like this. You want the palms to be touching. Okay, if the palms are touching, then the arms could come overhead. If the palms aren't touching and you wanted to get that stretch, you could grab your strap and make sure that the strap is nice and close, right? You want the strap to be shoulder width or closer. So not out wide like this, right? You want the hands to be nice and close, shoulder width or closer before you bring them overhead. Okay, whatever you're doing with your hands, make sure that your head is heavy, right? Let the head hang heavy wherever you are. Okay, we're here for maybe just a couple more slow full breaths.
And on your next inhale, your hands will come back under your shoulders for a halfway lift. All right from here, your hands will come to your hips. Roll your elbows up toward the sky. Rise one vertebra at a time all the way up to standing. <laughs> Excuse me. I have allergies. I'm not sick. <laughs> okay. From here, we're going to heel toe the feet closer together. Okay. You're going to inhale. Bring the arms out wide and up. Exhale. Fold forward. Flat back. Inhale. Lift halfway. Lengthen. Exhale. Fold. Bend the knees. Sit all the way back to the floor. Okay. All right. So from here, we're going to make your way onto your back. All right, on your back, we're going to um, find that block, right? What we want is um, we want to be able to get, if you can, to the highest height, right? You're getting to as high of a height as you can, right? That's where we're going is restorative bridge, and you want to... So if you have lots of books, then that might be how you're getting yourself up there, right? It might be that you're taking that same uh, bolster, and you're kind of, I don't know, stacking, like, books and bolster together, right? You can kind of problem solve here. All right, but basically what we want to do is start seated, right? We're going to roll nice and slow all the way down, right? So you're reaching the hands out in front of you. Your chest stays puffed like before, right? Shoulders stay back. Feet stay cemented to the floor. And especially in that halfway point, you want to lower slow. Really nice, beautiful. Okay, so from here, we're gonna bring the feet a little closer to you so that you can touch your fingertips to your heels. All right, that'll let you know that your fingers, your fingers just barely grazing your heels will let you know that your heels are the right distance from your buttocks. Okay, so from here, we're gonna press the big toe mounds down so that you feel your inner thighs engage. Inhale to lift your hips. Slide that block at whatever height you can, right? Maybe it's just the middle height. That's fine. Maybe it's the highest height if you can. Okay, all the way up and under your sacrum. I like it vertical, but you might like it horizontal better. You choose. Okay, and just make sure it's not stabbing anything, right? It wants to be under your sacrum, not, um, not under your spine or your tailbone, okay? It should feel comfy to rest there. It's, it's just like above your butt. Okay, slightly above your butt. Okay, so from here we can stay. We might roll the shoulder bones down and under even more. Let the palms face up. Okay, and then lay. Maybe you can extend one leg. Right, see how that feels. Maybe you ex can extend the other leg or switch. Right, maybe that's too much. That's okay. You don't have to do that if that feels like too much. Right, you could even... Maybe have one knee slightly bent while the other leg is long. Right? You just kind of see what feels best to you in your body. But we're just going to kind of extend the legs as much as feels okay to you. Again, you might bring a block under your heels if that would feel better for you. Okay? You're keeping the belly engaged, right? The belly stays hugging in, right? You're not just totally dumping into the low back, right? There's this engagement of the belly, this um, protecting of the low back, okay? And then from here, you um, we're going to move on, right? So that if your our legs are extended, then you're going to bend the knees one at a time so that the feet plant back under the hip, uh, feet plant back under the knees, okay? And you're going to play with starting to grab your left foot and just pull it back toward you a little bit. Maybe you're on your toes here with the heel lifted. Okay, this is something I just did with another teacher friend of mine and it felt so good. I was like, I have to share it with you all, right? So you're just extending that left knee down toward the um, wall out in front of you, right? And pulling the left foot back toward you. So that you're on the toes here. All right, you get a nice stretch. And now that we're warm, you should have a little more openness to do this, right? You get a nice stretch in your quad and your hip flexor. Okay, and then 
stay on that side as long as you like. When you're ready, you'll just do the same thing on the other side, right? So you can use your hand to kind of assist you to pull that right foot back, get on the right toes, right? And send that right foot back as you extend the right knee down toward the front of the room. Right, you're still hugging your belly in and keeping the belly engaged here. You're getting this nice stretch in the quad, the hip flexor. Go slow, right? Don't do anything that's crazy. Right? Don't don't go so intense that you're in pain. Right? Just small movements. Let the hand assist. Right? With maybe just the toes down and the heel lifted. Right? The knee extends out down. Okay, so you can kind of play with that a little bit, see how that feels. Or maybe you like the extending of the legs out instead. You just play. You might also notice that you started at one height of the block and you can shift the block to a different height, right? Or you might find that you want to stay right where you are, okay? But wherever you are, we're just going to spend maybe another three long breaths here. Mm, really nice. And then as you're ready, you'll bend one knee at a time so that the feet are under the knees. Press into the big toe mounds first so that you feel your inner thighs engage. Inhale to lift your hips off that block. Lower slow, right? One vertebra at a time, really slow. After an intense back bend, you can feel an urge to hug the knees in, but please don't do that, right? You don't want to go from a back bend to a forward fold. You want to go through neutral first so you hug your belly in so the low back is flat the spine is neutral we take a couple long breaths here with this neutral spine hmm, and from here you have lots of choices maybe you just want to get windshield wipers with the feet wide as the mat Knees swaying side to side, right? Maybe you want a happy baby grabbing outer or inner edges of the feet, the elbows inside the knees, okay? The tailbone presses back down toward the floor. The soles of the feet are up toward the sky. There's external rotation of the thighs, right? So the thighs are rolling away from you. You can even kind of do this manual adjustment if you like. You might be rocking side to side. You might be straightening one leg at a time here in your happy baby. And you might be coming through Supta Baddha Konasana from your happy baby. Right? Soles of the feet together, pull the feet toward your belly. And perhaps even lower the feet to the floor, knees open like a book for that Supta Baddha Konasana, that reclined butterfly pose. You might stay right here for the rest of class. You might feel an urge to come through a supine twist or any other shapes or movements that might be calling to you before you set up for your shavasana. And whenever you're ready, you can make your way toward your shape of choice on your back for your shavasana. So if Supta Baddha Konasana is not what you want, maybe you just close the knees using the hands to assist and then send the legs long. Maybe you want to grab that bolster that you had from before and bring it under the knees for a little extra relief and support of the low back, right? It can feel nice to rest the knees on something. You can bring a blanket under your head as a pillow if that would feel nice to kind of lift the head above the heart slightly. Just make sure that if you are doing that, that your shoulders don't have anything under them so that they can roll away from the ears. And you allow the eyes to close and fall deep into their sockets. The bones to get heavy, flesh falling relaxed away from the bones. 
letting go of any control. There's nothing left to do. There's nowhere to be. You're right exactly where you need to be in this moment. Relaxed and whole. Slowly, gently, beginning to invite your awareness back into your body. Inviting in a deeper breath. And small movements, maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes. Maybe you circle your wrists and your ankles. And as you're ready, reach your arms up overhead to stretch long both directions. Bend your knees, roll over to one side, using your lower arm as a pillow. Take a moment in that fetal position to check in with any intention or dedication you may have set at the beginning of your practice. Or if you didn't have one, perhaps you just send gratitude to the earth for supporting you whether or not you notice it there. And then on your next inhale, use the strength of your arms to press yourself up to a seat. And finding a seat that feels comfortable for you. Perhaps sitting up on something to lift your hips slightly. And once you do arrive in that comfortable seat, you'll roll your shoulders back and bring your hands to your heart. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale to bow your chin to your chest. The light within me sees, honors, and reflects the light within you. Namaste. Um, thank you for tuning in. 
Um, I hope that this opened you up and um, countered some of that excessive sitting we might be doing. I hope you all are well and um, feel free to leave comments if you have any questions.